What's up everybody and welcome to another episode of Supreme Decisions and yes, it's your host, Supreme Decisions. Well, today I'm actually getting ready to thank the guys that have already joined the channel. I'm going to apologize for not getting the content out to you guys. And I'm also going to prepare you to, now we're getting ready to start doing some live because this month, or the month of October, we're doing the month that I'm going to call the Drive for Five. And the whole thing is we're looking for 5,000 new members and or 5,000 new subscriptions and we're also looking for at least $5,000 in new revenue for the channel and I want to thank you guys that have already like I said started and pitching in with the support of the channel by sharing the video liking the video commenting on the video and hitting that bell and the thumbs up because all those things go into the algorithm that allow the channel to grow a little bit more a lot better than it has so just keep that in mind when you come in hit that like button but today we're going to have a quick lesson and yes i got to look up because i'm out here in the warehouse district and yes yeah, a little late in the evening but it is what it is at this moment because i have to get you guys some material well, you heard me a couple weeks ago where I spoke about um, the challenges to the effectiveness of defense counsel. Well, we're going to talk about standard 3-8.4, which is exactly the challenges to the effectiveness of defense counsel. A lot of times we just go along with whatever they tell us or however they tell us, no matter who it is or what they're doing. But we also have people that are getting off death row for things such as ineffectiveness of counsel. We're having cases overturned such as ineffectiveness of counsel. But I also want to show you there's a secondary liability for ineffectiveness of counsel because that's a defense counsel issue. But now here's where I want to go into because part A deals with just defense counsel itself because in any post-conviction challenge to the effectiveness of defense counsel, the prosecutor should be cognitive of the defendant's potential attorney-client privilege with former defense counsel as well as former defense counsel's other ethical and legal obligation and not seek to abrogate such privileges or obligations without an unambiguous legal basis or court order. Now, the reason why you bring into the fold or whatever the objects of the prosecutor is because the prosecutor themselves have a liability in order to preserve the defense for ineffectiveness of counsel. Now you would think, why would they do that? Because I constantly say they're part of the revenue trail. Well, part B goes into the why, because you know that's the whole purpose of this channel. Not only the application, but the actual why anything is done, why anything is said, and why anything happens. And here is the, the second part of that. If a prosecutor observes at any stage of a criminal proceeding, defense counsel conduct or omission that might reasonably constitute ineffectiveness assistance of counsel, the prosecutor should take reasonable steps to preserve the defendant's right to effective assistance as well as the public's interest in obtaining a valid conviction while not intruding on a defendant's constitutional right to counsel. During an ongoing defense representation, the prosecutor should not express concerns regarding possible ineffectiveness of census on the public record without an unambiguous legal basis or court order or should not communicate at such concerns directly to the defendant. One of these we're gonna start with is the should not communicate concerns directly to the defendant. Why? Because the prosecutor has a legal liability to the defendant because they are representatives of the public. Who's the public? The defendant is still part of the public. They still have an obligation to you. So whenever I talk about everyone in the courtroom has a legal obligation to the defendant, you, this is where it comes from. This is not me. This is directly from the standards of the American Bar Association. I don't make this up. This is literally written down by the American Bar Association. 
because if the prosecutor sees that you are not receiving adequate defense, the prosecutor is to bring it to the attention of the judge that there is a lack of proper vigorous defense. That generally doesn't happen because that means they're biting the hand that feeds them because this is the very thing that a public defender does. This is why you have prosecutors that aren't looking to find the truth. They're looking for guilty verdicts. They're looking for means of easy conviction. They're looking for deals. These are why the first ounces of any vigorous defense or any line of defense goes directly through the prosecution. This is why the liability is placed on their shoulders. Why? Because they took an oath. They accepted a job. They participated in a duty to represent the best interests of the people, the best interests of the public. And guess who's the public? Guess who the people are? You. Now, this is only part of it. I get deeper into this during the trainings. I get deeper in this during the conversations in our lives. So this is just a touching point, but it's also another feather in the cap. Those that love the podcast, continue to support the podcast, 99 cents, 4.99, 9.99 or more. And you can do it through Apple Pay, which is simply sending a message to the gocp at gmail.com on your iphone in messenger hit an amount hit send it goes into the account and we keep it pushing the next part of this is thank you guys for joining the website there are four tiers grab a tier it's going to be a lot of information going to be put on there some of you're going to get early content this is going to be the beginning of shit the greatest thing ever there's also gonna be Patreon exclusive teachings. We're also gonna have live teachings. We're also gonna have the question and answers because as we're growing, this is going to become hell its own thing. So just keep be on the lookout, purchase your t-shirts. And next month, we're probably gonna have the hoodies drop because it's getting a little colder. Hopefully you guys will be able to like them and we're going to have our orders on time because we did have a back back order on shipments so everybody should have their stuff by now if not hit me up i'll make sure everything gets made right so love you guys let's keep going let's keep growing share like comment and let's go let's grow supreme